Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here, your source for gaming tech, emulation, and open source news. Let's get started. All right, we'll kick things off talking about Windows emulation on Android, and it appears a brand new project has just popped up over on GitHub. It's called X Input Bridge. And they say X input support for a Mobox and Dark OS. So just in the past 24 hours, we've had three different releases. The ugly first build, the second more stable build, and the second more stable build updated. Now it's worth pointing out they say this repository provides X input support for Mobox and Dark OS. Please note that this is the initial test version, so not everything may work perfectly. They will continue to work on improving it and welcome any suggestions for enhancement. Now, for those who may be unaware, X input will allow for a whole bunch of different controllers to work with Mobox and Dark OS, but your controller will have to support X input. If it's D input only, it's not going to work with this. X input bridge is 100% free and open source, and I'll drop a link to it in the description below. Next up, we're quickly talking about Fallout 76. And we've been talking about Fallout a little bit lately thanks to its resurgence and popularity because of the TV show. Fallout 4 has been doing extremely well, and Fallout 76 just celebrated a milestone. So for reference here, Fallout 76 was released back in 2020, and under 24 hours ago they hit their all-time peak for people playing the game at the same time on Steam. 73,368. For reference, the previous record for people playing this game at the same time on Steam was back in 2020 during a free weekend when you could play the game for free. And that was 32,982. So they are absolutely smashing that. Now between Fallout 4 and Fallout 76, I'd argue Fallout 4 is the better game. But let me know your thoughts about this in the comments below. And speaking about 76, next up we're quickly talking about the people behind one of my favorite Linux distributions, and that's System76. And they just published a brand new blog post for April. So in this blog post, they talk about their Ubuntu-based Pop OS 22.04 LTS. They've updated their Linux kernel to version 6.8.0. It includes driver support for Intel XC and Intel Arc graphics, as well as drivers for a future AMD Zen 5 chipset and additional networking optimizations. On top of that, they're currently testing out version 6.8.2 and MESA 24.0.3. There's also information here about their new cosmic desktop environment, the one that's written in Rust. So they say there will be theming, including icon themes. It appears they've made a ton of progress on Cosmic. Now they say it's currently in pre-alpha state and you may wanna pay attention to April 27th here. There may be more information unveiled as to when we can actually test this out. Next up, we're quickly talking about TikTok, and it appears the ban in the US for TikTok is pretty much inevitable. The ban bill passed in the House, and Android Authority is reporting that it could become law in a matter of days. I'll drop a link to the article in the description below, and I do recommend checking it out. They say if the bill becomes law, ByteDance will have two options, sell TikTok or end its presence in the US. So without getting political, let me know your thoughts about the future of TikTok in the comments below. Do you think ByteDance is going to sell, or do you think they're just going to cease to exist in the US? Have you stopped using TikTok, and do you think people will turn to a VPN to circumvent the whole banning situation? Next up, we're quickly talking about Spider-Man 2, the unofficial PC port. And this thing just got another update. They're up to version 1.4.3. If you are curious about this one, I'll drop a link to the YouTube video in the description below, and feel free to check it out. It's kind of crazy how much the developers were able to accomplish with leaked source code. And speaking about developers and development, next up we're talking about emulators on the App Store, specifically ones that require JIT. So Oatmeal Dome has just posted a very informative article. I'll drop a link to it in the description below and do recommend checking it out. The article is titled, Why Dolphin Isn't Coming to the App Store. And they say here, we've been asked many times if we will submit Dolphin iOS, our fork of Dolphin, to the App Store. And the answer is unfortunately no. Apple still does not allow us to use a virtual technology that is necessary for Dolphin to run with good performance, JIT. 
J-I-T stands for subscribe to Mr. Sujano, or just in time, depending on how you want to interpret that. This article talks about J-I-T, what it is, why it's important, and also has a comparison of dolphin without J-I-T and dolphin with J-I-T. And I can tell you, there is a huge difference between having J-I-T and not having J-I-T. It's night and day here, the frame rates are not even comparable. Now we've talked about this one before, but in my opinion, Apple just allowing emulation on the App Store is a pretty massive achievement. JIT is a completely different beast altogether. It's really gonna limit emulation on Apple devices, specifically with GameCube and Wii, PS2, and possibly even more. Interestingly, yesterday we talked about Provenance, which is a front end for a whole bunch of different emulators for iOS and tvOS. Included in there is Dolphin and also Play for PS2, and both of those do require JIT. Now as far as I know, Providence submitted for approval on the App Store, but if we take a look at their website, not on their GitHub, just their website here, and scroll down, I do not see GameCube and Wii, and I also don't see PS2. So if I had to guess, I would assume the App Store version of Provenance will not have Dolphin or Play in it. And speaking about the App Store, next up we're talking about MAME. And here's a question over on MAME for iOS's GitHub. Do you have any plans to release the MAME emulator on the App Store? And the answer here is yes. So the developer's actual response is yes. In fact, I submitted it for review and got a rejection notice. We're trying to resolve this now and hopefully we'll have an update soon. Next up here, we've got a fun one and a crazy one. Someone has ported Sonic 2 to the TI-84 Plus calculator. So at the time of filming, Sonic 2 CE version 1.0 is the latest update. And they say here, Sonic2.zip is playable from start to finish, although with an inconsistent frame rate. And Sonic2fast.zip has a consistent frame rate of 30 to 45 frames per second. But there are no enemies, bosses, or goalposts, meaning not a single level is completable. And if you are curious about this one and wondering how in the heck they actually managed to accomplish this, there's an article over on Medium, and I'll drop a link to it in the description below. Obviously, things are not necessarily perfect, but at the same time here, I find this incredibly impressive. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff. We talked about a bunch today. Let me know your thoughts about absolutely any of it in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate. Save your state. <laughs>